Hello again, and welcome back to Symphony Notes, our monthly podcast where we preview concerts by the Annapolis Symphony Orchestra with the ensemble's conductor and music director, Jose Luis Novo. Hello again. Nice to be back with you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so the season is off to an electrifying start, and now it continues with what on the surface, Beethoven, Chadwick, Barber, and Richard Danielpour might appear to be somewhat eclectic, not necessarily connected programming, but you're here to say that there are some uh, wonderful and even uh, remarkable connections. Yeah, as, as you know, we are exploring this season, uh, we've called this season Beethoven Discovers America, and we are going to be finishing with um, one of Beethoven's symphonies, number four, um, and we are sort of trying to uh, delineate how Beethoven's music affected this country and uh, Chadwick is one of the first composers that that uh, went to study uh, to Germany and uh, was completely immersed in, in German music namely Beethoven at the time brought it back to Boston where he was the, the director of the conservatory for a while and and started composing and and he pretty much brought that heritage straight to the states um so he's one of those composers that has been uh, forgotten that that is an important link in the classical music world and that's what we are doing his one of his uh, sketches from the symphonic sketches the number number three Hob hobgoblin which also uh, it's a good uh, follow-up on halloween mm -hmm. <laughs> um that's one one part. Then we have Barber, who's the great established American composer, um, and we are going to be performing uh, the Overture to the School of, of Scandal, which is uh, one of his actually first orchestral piece. So very young Barber, um, full of talent, full of life, pretty much what Beethoven was when he was a young composer as well. Um, and then we are going to be performing uh, uh, a, a piece by a living composer, Richard Daniel Poor, uh, a concerto for percussion and orchestra, who was commissioned by our own soloist, Lisa Pegger, and, and the piece was written in 2015, so it's not even five years old. Um, so we have the beginnings of American music, the established American music, and the living American music, all related to Beethoven, the great master. I think that is a fabulous program. <laughs> And obviously, it goes beyond the theme. I mean, the music is quite striking, yeah. quite powerful, quite substantial. So let's begin with a living composer and, and really the esteemed American composer, Richard Daniel Poor. And um, he might be new to many people in the audience and equally new might be the concept of a concerto for percussion. Let's first start with uh, the composer. What does his music sound like, and what does the concerto for percussion sound like? Well, R Richard's music is, to put it quickly, although it sounds a little cliche, is very, um, it has an instant appeal. He's a composer that has, uh, again, a little bit like Beethoven, that sense of uh, acceptance from the audience that, that wants to uh, be recognized right away. Beethoven obviously had that, and and he knew how to how to do it. Uh, Richard has that aspect as well, and that's why his music tends to be very uh, cre creates a very quick impact in people because it's um, it's easy to listen to. Um, I I think that Beethoven would have loved. Uh, composing a, a concerto for um, for percussion. But as you know, the percussion at the time of Beethoven was almost not, not treated at, at the soloistic level as it is now. Uh, he only used timpani for his symphonies, and then at the very end, he included the bass drum and, mm. and, and, and triangle, uh, triangle Symbol. and cymbals yeah. for his ninth symphony. But had he known more with the percussion, percussion have gone, he would have definitely been interested in writing a, a, con a percussion concerto. So Richard here has the, the, the advantage of, of history um, and, and 
the the percussion family being developed to the level that it has been now in the 21st century has all this array of instruments to to explore and i think that that's that's a very interesting um setup for a composer because you have is one instrumentalist but many instruments to uh to deal with uh, which brings an incredible array of colors and and atmospheres and as you know this Concerto is supposed to explore the concept of a healer. Mm -hmm. It's called the wounded healer. And um, it has four movements. Each of the movements is sort of dedicated to a different aspect or personality of a healer. And I think that Beethoven would have been very interested in that as well because he knew when he wrote the Fourth Symphony already that he was going deaf. So he probably would have been uh, in tune with someone that could help him make sense of his uh, deafness. Yeah, he had tremendous medical issues not yeah. to mention his ongoing broken hearts um, <laughs> so I think he would have uh, been impressed by this the title is very interesting the wounded I mean it's concerto for percussion but it's really called the wounded healer mm -hmm. what is the theory behind that it, it it's actually quite moving yeah I think Daniel Poor has always been interested in the in the in the character of, of a healer from a philosophical point of view. Um, and this is what he decided to do with this piece, sort of exploring uh, the character of, of a healer in, in its different manifestations. So I mentioned that there are four movements in this concerto, uh, which run uh, sort of in parallel, uh, moderate movement, fast, moderate, fast. Uh, so it has an inner arch structure underneath. Um, the first movement is called the the mystic. So it's supposed to be the aspect of a, of a healer. Uh, the second movement is called the trickster, which has um, this twist on the people that, that with humor are able to do so much to help other people. And this is a good connection with hope Hobgoblin from Chadwick and the humor in Beethoven's symphony as well. The third movement of the concerto is called the martyr. And this is the healers that go all the way to sacrifice their lives to help other people. Um, and uh, then the last movement is called the, the shaman. And this is the, the one that has the, the earthy connection to uh, rock influenced music and the one that is going to feature this solo instrument uh, more e exuberantly uh, with a pretty big cadence at the very end, almost like, like what you hear in, in rock tunes. So it's a very uh, fascinating journey through exploring what the character of a healer can uh, mean in the lives of many different types of people. Would it be fair to say also that the underlying theme why it's called wounded healer is that you know the idea of you don't judge someone unless you've walked in their shoes but someone who has been wounded in some way is better equipped to, to address the needs of someone else who has been wounded either physically or psychologically absolutely i think that means that there is a level of empathy from the start that you would not find if it's not because uh, you put the two concepts together, the person that heals, but the person that has experienced the, the, the sickness uh, by himself, so that relates directly to what has to be done to bring those people to good health. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful concept. It's a, I think it's a myth, or we limit ourselves to think that the Beethoven blockbuster symphonies are three, the Eroka, five, and the Ninth Symphony, and maybe the Seventh, but those in-between symphonies have a, a lot to offer, and the fourth is a great example of that. And, and in fact, Beethoven was working on his symphony number no. five when he had a change of pace and a change of thought, and he began working on what we now is what we now know is the symphony number no. four, a remarkable work, plenty of melodies and and drama, but it's that opening that really makes you question, you know, where was Beethoven's head? <laughs> that, that's a very good point. I think um, I don't I wasn't in Beethoven's head when he composed and I can only speculate, but I suspect that um, the Fifth Symphony is so intense 
that he probably at some point needed a break. And this is what the fourth symphony actually ended up being, a break from the intensity of, of this fate uh, control symphony in his fifth. And came into a, a, a piece that is full of, of humor, of an, a, a, a better place in, as a human being in general. But as you mentioned, it does have a very uh, intriguing beginning and starts exploring in a way that you wonder where where is all this going? Uh, and it's not until a few minutes later when finally the Allegro Vivace comes into the scene, sort of in an explosive way as Beethoven liked doing, full of joy, full of uh, wit and humor in a way that that pretty much remains for the for the rest of the piece with the, maybe the exception of the second movement that is, has more loving, uh, more loving character. And uh, we've saved uh, the first piece. Is the first piece on the program the, the, the it is. barber? It is. Okay. So based on uh, a drama by Shelley, School for Scandal Overture, um, one of those rare moments when there's incredible drama and then beautiful melodies clashing but then ultimately coming together and i won't give away the ending but those <laughs> melodies are, are quite striking and this this is one of the qualities of barber's music it, he was a melodically incredibly gifted composer um something that we can say beethoven was not as much beethoven was gifted in many other ways but the melodies of beethoven somehow uh, work out in different ways um but Barber had this this gift as Schubert uh, to write melodies that would come up so naturally, and this is the case in this overture, with, especially with the second theme that is introduced by the oboe the first time, then the English horn in the recapitulation, um, but also the the whole atmosphere of the of the overture is is that of the of the of the play that is describing characters in a society that has been um, sort of uh, passed by and is old fashioned, but picks up on all the, the, the characteristics that they are humorous and that they are peculiar. And he does that incredibly well, especially considering that this was his first orchestral piece. And he was uh, in love at the time because he wrote this in Italy uh, with his colleague and lover uh, Giancarlo Menotti and you can tell that in the piece is full of young energy and that's exactly how it comes through and that's exactly why still a favorite opener for orchestras and audiences is because you feel that youth energy the same way as I, I was mentioning earlier as in Mendelssohn his pieces are full of of joy and youth and, and it's, it's just uh, incredibly virtuosic for the orchestra, which is another characteristic in this whole program, but full of creative and youthful energy that is contagious. So we've got joy, humor, drama, and a whole lot of percussion. <laughs> November 8 and 9, Friday and Saturday, the Annapolis Symphony Orchestra in concert at Maryland Hall and ticket information is available at annapolissymphony.org. Thank you, and thank you. Thank you.